On Earth, more than 70% of its surface is covered by oceans, and 96% of the planet's water is seawater. So, Earth is essentially a planet of oceans. However, humans have only explored about 5% of the oceans. Compared to space, 12 astronauts have successfully landed on the moon, while only four individuals have descended into the deepest parts of the Earth's oceans. Today, let's dive into the mysteries of the ocean. The average depth of the ocean is approximately 3,680 meters, whereas the average elevation of land on Earth is only about 860 meters. So, compared to land, the ocean is significantly deeper. The deepest point in the ocean is the Mariana Trench, which plunges to a depth of over 11,000 meters, making it much deeper than Mount Everest is tall. Let's continue our descent. First, we reach a depth of 3 meters, which is where people typically swim near the shore. Moving deeper, we reach 20 to 30 meters. This is an area where coral reefs and aquatic plants grow. Going further down to 40 meters, this is the maximum depth for recreational diving. If you go deeper than 40 meters, you may experience joint pain and dizziness. Interestingly, the world's deepest swimming pool is also 40 meters deep, located in a hotel called Monte Grotto Term in Italy. It's designed for diving enthusiasts and has a unique design. Continuing our descent to 70 meters, at this depth, people can experience hallucinations. It's also where you can find the world's largest fish, the whale shark, which commonly inhabits these waters. Now, let's go down to 100 meters. At this depth, professional divers reach their limit. Here, you can find the giant Pacific octopus, which can change colors like a chameleon and can grow up to 6 meters in length. In ancient times, it was often mistaken for a sea monster. Moving on to a depth of 200 meters, this is typically considered the beginning of the deep sea. Below this depth, there isn't enough light for photosynthesis to occur, so there are essentially no green plants. But at this depth there's a fish called Regalicus glessendot it's very big and long. There's an extreme sport called free diving, which involves diving as deep as possible on a single breath. The current world record for free diving is held by an Austrian named Herbert Nitsch, who reached a depth of 214 meters in 2007. This is generally considered impossible because beyond 100 meters, people start experiencing hallucinations, making it extremely challenging for most individuals. Let's go even deeper to 300 meters. At this depth, you can find large crabs, such as the Japanese spider crab, which many people enjoy eating. It has extraordinarily long legs, a small body, and can grow quite large. There's a specific challenge called No Limits, Free Diving, where divers use equipment like oxygen tanks. The deepest dive ever recorded in this category was 332 meters, achieved by an Egyptian diver named Ahmed Gamal Gabr in 2014. He descended to this depth in just 15 minutes, but took 13 and a half hours to ascend. The reason for the slow ascent is that his breathing mixture included not only oxygen, but also nitrogen and other gases. Rapid ascent would lead to the expansion of gas bubbles in his bloodstream, potentially causing decompression sickness or oxygen toxicity, which could result in permanent damage to the central nervous system. Therefore, he had to ascend slowly, allowing the gases to gradually exit his bloodstream. With a swimming speed of 25 meters per hour, it took him that long to resurface. His dive was closely monitored by 30 support staff, making it relatively safe. As of now, his record remains unbroken, as it's an extremely challenging feat. Normally, submarines operate at depths of around 300 to 500 meters underwater. Let's continue our descent to 500 meters. At this depth, we enter the realm of marine animals. The blue whale, as the largest animal on Earth, has a maximum diving depth of around 500 meters. Not only are blue whales massive in size, but their vocalizations are also incredibly loud, reaching up to 188 decibels, louder than the sound of a fighter jet. Moreover, their calls can travel up to 1,600 kilometers, allowing them to communicate with other whales far away. Apart from blue whales, another unexpected animal that can dive in this place is the penguin. Among them, the emperor penguin, the largest species of penguin, can easily dive to depths of over 500 meters and swim for up to 10 minutes in these conditions. They are among the most pressure-resistant birds. Continuing our descent to 600 meters, we encounter a fascinating creature called the Pacific Barrel Eye Fish. This fish has a transparent head with two upward-facing eyes. It doesn't need to look forward. It only needs to look up. Its protective shield is filled with fluid to safeguard its eyes. Additionally, we find the strawberry squid, Histiotuthis heteropsis, 
which has a body resembling a strawberry and one large green eye pointing upward to detect shadows and one small blue eye pointing downward to be alert to predators. Its eyes have different characteristics that allow it to see various light sources, primarily sunlight and bioluminescence. Descending to 700 meters, we enter the habitat of the European eel. While you might associate eels with rivers, they spend half of their lives in the ocean and return to rivers to spawn. People catch them for consumption when they migrate to rivers. Continuing to dive to 900 meters, we encounter the giant squid. These colossal creatures can grow over 10 meters long. Due to their enormous size and bizarre appearance, they have often been the subject of sea monster legends. Although they are not rare, they are rarely seen by humans. Now, let's go even deeper to 1,000 meters, entering the twilight zone, where it's completely dark, and marine life becomes scarcer. Scientists initially thought that animals in this zone might evolve like cave-welling fish, losing their eyes due to the absence of light. However, they've been surprised to discover that these creatures have evolved various illumination mechanisms. For example, the glass squid has evolved to be entirely transparent to make it difficult to spot from below, but its digestive organs, eyes, and tentacles remain visible and can emit light. This way, it can become 100% invisible. Diving to 1,300 meters, we encounter the leatherback sea turtle. These turtles have soft shells and, interestingly, they come to beaches to lay their eggs before returning to such deep ocean depths. Additionally, at this depth, you'll find the bizarre-looking Mitsukarina ostoni, also known as the goblin shark. Its most distinctive feature is its protrusible jaw that can extend to catch prey and retract it back into its mouth. It's a truly unique and eerie-looking deep-sea creature. Another fascinating inhabitant of this environment is the piglet squid, which has evolved to look like a mini-submarine with adjustable buoyancy using ammonia-filled chambers. It also has a small fin that functions like a motor, along with miniaturized eyes and tentacles for camouflage. The only thing it couldn't make transparent is its digestive glands, so it uses a bioluminescent light to eliminate any shadows, effectively turning itself into a see-through submarine. Continuing our descent to 1,700 meters, we encounter the southern elephant seal, which happens to be the largest species of seal. They have particularly large noses. An adult male southern elephant seal can reach up to 5 tons in weight and nearly 7 meters in length. Descending further to a depth of 2,000 meters, we find the black dragonfish, a creature that looks like it belongs in outer space. It has black, pointed teeth and a luminescent lure below that it uses to attract prey. It lies in wait, hidden in the darkness, then quickly snatches its prey when it approaches. Another predator with luminescent lures is the anglerfish, which uses its bioluminescent lure to attract prey in the dark depths. It sometimes sits in the mud and fishes, by dangling its lure to lure unsuspecting prey. Continuing our journey to 3,000 meters, we enter the twilight zone of the deep sea, where water temperatures drop to 1 to 2 degrees Celsius, there is no light, and water pressure exceeds 300 times atmospheric pressure. Life here is scarce, and you'll rarely encounter fish. However, it's home to the sperm whale, which can dive to depths of 3,000 meters, making it the deepest diving whale species. They dive to these depths to hunt for colossal squid, a favorite prey of theirs. Colossal squids are typically found in this depth range. After catching a colossal squid, the sperm whale brings it to the surface and consumes it. In fact, the indigestible beaks of these squids can accumulate in the whale's stomach, creating a substance that, when removed, emits a fragrant odor. This is why the sperm whale is sometimes referred to as the spermacidae whale, with spermacidae originally thought to be a kind of waxy substance with a pleasant scent. As for the name, sperm whale, it was derived from the oily substance found in the whale's head, which early whalers believed to be sperm, but it's actually a unique kind of oil used to amplify sound in the whale's echolocation system. This oil, known as spermacidae, was valuable in the 18th and 19th centuries for making high-quality candles and lubricants. Continuing even deeper to 3,800 meters, we reach the resting place of the RMS Titanic, which sank in 1912 along with Jack Dawson. Over a century has passed, and the Titanic remains submerged at this depth. It has been declared an underwater cultural heritage site, and salvage operations are not allowed. Diving further to 4,000 meters, we encounter the Colliatus sloani. These fish have exceptionally long teeth because deep-sea creatures have evolved such teeth due to the scarcity of food. Once they bite, they never let their prey escape. Descending to 6,000 meters, we enter the ultra-deep sea zone. This area comprises the largest expanse of the Earth's surface and is the least explored by humans, 
known as the abyssal plain. The abyssal plain is characterized by extremely flat terrain, with less than a 1 meter difference in elevation per kilometer. It covers more than 50% of the Earth's surface. The flatness of the seabed is due to marine snow, which consists of organic debris, such as dead fish, shrimp, and algae, sinking from the surface. It takes at least 20 days for this marine snow to reach the abyssal plain, but over time, it accumulates, covering the entire seabed. In the abyssal plain, you'll also find phenomena known as brine pools. These pools are similar to underwater geysers, and in some areas of the abyssal plain, methane from deep within the Earth's crust escapes and rises to the seabed. Due to the immense pressure, methane exists in a liquid hydrate form, dissolved in water. These solutions contain high levels of dissolved hydrogen sulfide and methane, making them about eight times denser than seawater and much heavier. As a result, they settle on the seabed and form pools. The edges of these pools are teeming with layers of clams that rely on symbiotic bacteria to convert methane into food, allowing them to thrive in this extreme environment. The high salinity and pressure of these pools make them inhospitable to most other forms of life. In Japan, there is a submarine called Deep Sea 6500. In 1989, it dived to a depth of 6,500 meters. Later, in 2012, China's submersible, the Jialong, reached a depth of 7,000 meters. Continuing to descend to a depth of 8,178 meters, this is currently the deepest known depth where fish can be found. In April 2017, a Chinese deep sea exploration team discovered a white fish at around 8,150 meters. Then, in August of the same year, a Japanese team also found the same type of fish at the same location. It's possible that these were the same species of fish. This fish still doesn't have an official name and is currently referred to as the Mariana snailfish. Descending further to 10,660 meters, a huge single-celled primitive organism was discovered at this depth. Although it's a single-celled organism, its body measures up to 20 centimeters. Our cells are so small that they are not visible, but this single cell is quite large and resembles something with leaves. But it only has one cell. It belongs to extremely primitive life forms, possibly similar to single-celled organisms from billions of years ago, which could grow to such sizes. Now, let's take a look at the deepest place in the ocean, the Mariana Trench. Its deepest point is known as the Challenger Deep reaching a depth of 11,034 meters. In fact, the depth of this trench was measured back in the 1950s. How was this depth measured? Sonar technology can measure depths only up to about 1,000 meters, and beyond that, it becomes unreliable. The depth was determined by using explosives. Bombs were dropped into the trench, creating a sound wave upon explosion. Based on the analysis of this sound wave, the depth was calculated. So far, only four people have reached this depth. Two of them did it in 1960, Don Walsh and Jacques Picard. They descended to the bottom of the trench at a depth of 10,916 meters. It took them a full five hours to reach the seabed, but they had to resurface almost immediately because they discovered a window crack in their vessel. However, before resurfacing, they observed their surroundings as much as possible and found flatfish and shrimp. The next person to reach this depth was James Cameron in 2012. With sponsorship from National Geographic and Rolex, Cameron descended to this depth. He spent over two hours at the seabed and reported seeing shrimp-like creatures about three centimeters long, but nothing else. He described the seabed as desolate, resembling the surface of the moon. The most recent person to reach this depth was Victor Vescovo in April and May 2019. He completed two consecutive dives to this depth. Vescovo is a shareholder of the Schmidt Ocean Institute and an underwater explorer. He reached a depth of 10, 928 meters and reported not seeing anything on the ocean floor except for a pile of trash bags. In 1960, there were flatfish and shrimp at this depth. In 2012, only shrimp were observed, and in 2019, all that remained were trash bags. To date, only four people have visited the deepest point of the ocean, fewer than those who have been to the moon. Exploring the depths of the ocean is crucial for understanding the limits of life and the origins of life, which are believed to have originated in the ocean. Scientists refer to the ancient oceanic water as the primordial soup. Initially, when the earth formed, there were no oceans, just molten lava. It was only around 4.1 billion years ago that the earth began to cool down, and with the movement of tectonic plates, the primitive oceans gradually emerged. 
Hydrothermal vents in the deep sea continuously mix substances in the ocean, and various elements collide and combine there. At a crucial moment, two molecules combined, giving rise to RNA, and it gave birth to a belief. I must survive. I must replicate myself. Scientists have long been curious about why there are countless ancient viruses near hydrothermal vents in the deep sea. It turns out that these vents have been their home for the past 4 billion years. The earliest born RNA molecule very likely was a virus, 